Hello and welcome to the fourth video in the series on upgrading System Platform 2012 and 2012 R2 components to the latest release which is 2014. In this particular video we'll focus on upgrading the historian from 2012 R2 to 2014. To do this we'll just follow some simple steps. The first step we'll do is ensure that the runtime database has been fully backed up. Also as an addition as an additional measure we'll also ensure that we did do a database export. We'll also stop and disable the historian. Then we'll proceed on to upgrading the historian. Then we'll apply the new 2014 licenses. Then we'll restart the historian and verify functionality. Now let's begin. Now, as with the previous videos, we'll be using uh, VMware's ESXi virtual, uh, virtualization host server uh, to do the uh, demonstration. And here we will select our historian. We've opened up a console. Now, the first thing we do is let's verify that we've done backups. Here you see I have a historian uh, export that's in a text file and a backup of the runtime database. So we've taken care of that. We can verify that our historian is online and everything is working. And so now at this point let us stop and disable the historian. By right clicking on status and selecting stop, this will stop the historian. We'll verify that it goes down smoothly. Now we see that we have the uh, red X here on our historian, so essentially it's stopped. So I'm going to right click on it again, come down to all tasks, and then I'm going to shut down and disable the historian completely. When the historian successfully shuts down, I should see all red in the module section here. So now we have all red X's and uh, for all intents and purposes, the historian is effectively shut down and disabled. We'll exit out of the uh, systems management console utility and we'll put in our DVD. Once you put in your DVD, you should get the autoplay dialog box and also if you don't get this dialog box just simply go to your DVD drive and run the setup.exe application. So we run the application and we'll get the prerequisites installation dialog box. In this case it's going to install uh, Microsoft.NET Framework version 4.5 as a prereq. We click on the install prerequisites button and that will begin the process. Depending on how fast your system is it may take a little while and it, or it may take a long while. Once the prerequisites have been installed successfully we click on the next button and we get the informational dialog that lets us know uh, what products will be upgraded in this process. We click on OK. We get the uh, dialog box here, or the interface that lets us know all of the individual components that will be upgraded and we click on Next select our language, click on next we get an informational message that says these services are running still so we just simply click on the stop services button okay and when the, the uh, sufficient amount of services have stopped we can click on the next button all right, we see here that uh, it gives us another dialog box for any additional prereqs that needs to be installed. In this case, there's none. So we click on Next. Verify that these are the components. 
that will be upgraded and then we click on the upgrade button and that begins the actual upgrade process and depending on the, the performance of your system it may take a little a little bit of time or it may take a lot of time now once the process completes we'll get this dialog box that's saying installation is completed and now we have to configure it so we'll click on the configure go through a short process of installing additional items and it brings up the configuration utility To configure the historian, we'll just simply highlight the historian server on the left. Ensure that the appropriate boxes are checked, like for instance, auto start the historian. We'll select or, or uh, configure our SQL uh, login information. In this case, I'm going to use my SQL information. and then I click on the configure button it'll bring up the configuration this this dialog box that executes uh, various scripts to uh, migrate uh, the runtime database once the process completes you can verify it inside of this informational window and then we simply click close and we get this informational message about rebooting the system and we just simply reboot once the system successfully reboots now it's time to install the licenses so we do that by going to start all programs invences license manager and locate the invences license manager utility and click on it this brings up the interface we select import install licenses we click the button to browse to our location we locate our license select the appropriate license click open next verify that the license is installed and exit now let's open up the systems management console to verify the historian is actually running so we go to start all programs wonderware system management console and let's expand the historian we'll click on status we'll see that we have all greens and the latest version which is 11.5 so that concludes upgrading the historian version 2012 or 2012 R2 to the historian 2014 which is version 11.5 Thanks for watching.